Welcome back to the How Podcast 101. I am Jake Roberts, joined alongside Lucas Mitchell, and we have an engineer, Noah Riley. And we also have our special guest. Would you like to give us your name? Shelly Luther. Shelly Luther. Thank you so much for joining us. We Absolutely. really appreciate it. You're welcome. Thanks for having me. Especially in studio. It's, it's an honor to have you in here. So, um, I guess that leads us right into our first question. Um, just tell us a little bit about yourself. Um, well, I live actually right down the street. We are taping here in Howe, right? We can tell people that. Um, I live right outside of Tom Bean with my husband, um, and we rescue horses. We have about 50 livestock animals there. That's interesting. Yeah. We'll get, we'll get to that more in a little bit. We have okay. some, we have a few questions pertaining to that. Awesome. Um, would you mind telling us a little bit about your background? Oh, how far back do you want to start? I'm a daughter of a 26-year Marine. Mm -hmm. Um, We were raised all over the country, but a lot in Southern California. I've lived in Texas since 93. Um, I came here on a softball scholarship to UT Arlington. And uh, my parents were born and raised in Texas and for generations have, you know, generations, their families lived in Texas. Yeah, where did you come from? I was born in Great Lakes, Illinois, okay. and I've lived in several states before I was okay. kind of went to high school in, so, in California. So you've been to a lot of places. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Go ahead, Lucas. Um, would you? Okay, now we're going to get on to the animals. Would you like <laughs> to tell us all about your animals? All about them? <laughs> Absolutely. Um, so we rescue horses. Mm-hmm. Um, okay. We have uh, rescue horses and donkeys. We have too many donkeys. <laughs> We have many horses. We have draft horses and just regular size horses. Um, they're basically huge yard ornaments, expensive dogs, we call them, because they basically just walk around yeah. and do whatever they want. <laughs> um, yeah, so we have three alpacas. We have tons of goats. We have a kangaroo. Okay. I pet That's your kangaroo. <laughs> you did. Yeah, they are that, very soft. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Kangaroos are cool. Never thought I would touch a kangaroo. I, I, that's for sure. Yeah, that's pretty crazy. (laughs) You think Australia, because that's like right stereotypical for a kangaroo to be in. Right. There's lots of people in Texas that actually have kangaroos. Really? Yeah. Don't you have to have like really tall walls? Is that true? Yeah, you have to. I pulled that. That's my fault. Okay. Um, yeah, the fencing Mm -hmm. um has to be. Ours is eight feet, but it depends which kinds you have. We have reds. Um, so if you ever look on YouTube, you guys see YouTube or snaps of anything yeah. of like that, that big kangaroo. That's oh all the, yeah. They're like that. really tall. <laughs> yeah. Ours get up to like, you know, between five and six feet tall. The oh males gosh. can get super muscular, but usually they don't get gigantic. Yeah. Like what you see, yeah. they get that big from fighting in their pack against oh, the other one uh, okay. yeah, to be the most sense. dominant. What, so. what got y'all involved in rescuing animals? So I started rescuing um, dogs first. So I worked for like a dog shelter um, and they need people to foster animals. Mm -hmm. Um, So like if there's a pregnant mom, obviously that pregnant mom can't hang out in the shelter. So someone can keep them and help raise the pups and then find homes for them. So I kind of started with that first. Or if there's a sick dog, you need to get them well on medicine and then it can be adopted out. So I started with that and then it turned into horses. That's, That's awesome. Yeah. Um, last animal question. <laughs> no, I like the um, animal questions. Can you tell us your favorite story? I'm sure you have a lot about your animals. I'm sure there's something out there. Uh, well, we have a, a mini donkey named mm-hmm. Doug. Okay. And, um, I'm familiar. <laughs> yes. He's like, I mean, he suits like, he's just his name, Doug. Um, and he likes to welcome any of the new horses that we get. And so we got this horse and he was just sitting there and it's the first day we got the horse and Doug went and got one of the feed bowls and like with his mouth and then like threw it at him and was like, here, (laughs) and I have it on video. It's actually funny. I can share it with you sometime if you guys ever want to see it, but it's just funny because they're like little people. They act, they act so funny, but that, that donkey is hilarious. He's just, he's kind of just out there. He's out there and he just acts like a person. It's funny. (laughs) It's funny. All right, Lucas. All right, uh, let's get on to, I guess, your story and other things like that. So for people who haven't heard your story, just go ahead and tell us about. Oh, are you talking about like a year and a half yes. ago? Yes. Oh, when man. everything Far kicked away. off. I know this could be a lofty question. No, Don't no. Don't spare anything. Okay. <laughs> wow. Um, so um, most people heard that um, 
I was the salon owner that opened in Dallas. We shut down for a month during the COVID shutdown. Um, and then I had hairstylists that were really struggling because if you're in that industry, the cosmetology industry, you're used to getting money daily. It's kind of like waiters yeah. and waitresses. You're used to getting your money. Um, some of them may, probably didn't have a lot in savings at the time. Um, and even if they did, no one knew we would be shut down like we did. Yeah. They kept saying two weeks to flatten the curve. And so we're like, okay, we can do two weeks. Mm -hmm. But then they turned it into three and then they turned it into four. And so once they turned it into four, I had a stylist call me and say that um, they are, um, thanks. They weren't able to eat for the last two days because they were feeding their own kids, wanting to wow. make sure their kids got That's fed. That's crazy. Yeah. And so um, my husband and I prayed about it a lot yeah. and we woke up the next day and I'm like, hey, I'm gonna open the salon and he looked at me and said okay yeah and so we opened and um after a lot of police visits um a lot of paperwork being sent and a lot of city people telling us we needed to close the salon um and we didn't i was in jail about a week and a half later for two full days wow oh, that must have been crazy. just i mean the way things like turned around so quickly off of a night's sleep you're right. I mean, that's incredible. I mean, it's just, it's it's almost like impressive how fast things can turn around. It's wrong. Right. It's, yeah, it, no, it definitely it was. It was, it, was, yeah. it was, um, during that time, it was just surreal. Like, cam yeah. like 20 cameras outside yeah. of the salon every single day. Like, and they're just, you know, trying to cut hair. <laughs> and here's what's crazy. Yeah. The day I went, the day I went to jail, mm -hmm. It was okay for, you know, Walmart, Lowe's, Home Depot to be open. Yeah, because uh -huh. they were essential. Right, essential, yeah. non-essential, essential, right? Yeah, we were non-essential. Yeah. Um, the dog groomer next door to my salon, essential, was open the whole so, time. So dogs, dogs are important. Because, but people dogs <laughs> are, now I'll be the first to tell you dogs are important, okay? <laughs> but we're looking at this, you know, yeah. going, okay, so your dog can get their hair cut. This wasn't a vet office, but you can't get your hair cut, <laughs> says the government. Essential, okay? You could also, um, you could get Botox, you could get um, different procedures done mm -hmm. uh, as far, that were not necessary. You could get an abortion that day. Um, and this is like, you could, you could get, um, let's just say there's lots of things that were going on at that time mm -hmm. that they, the government was claiming to be liquor stores were open. CBD oil was there. Um, you could get all of those things, but if you I get, opened you get the door, <laughs> I didn't even cut someone's hair cause I don't I cut hair. I opened the door to my business and was thrown in jail, even though all of those things were essential. And I was putting people at risk. Yeah. But at Walmart, Home Depot, Lowe's, you can't get COVID there. See, I don't see how that's <laughs> any. I don't see how that's any different. It's not, it's, especially if you're following their rules. Right. We had um, we had everybody wearing masks because it was early. And, you know, yeah, we didn't yeah. know, like, right? Didn't know everything. I I bought mm -hmm. hand sanitizer mm -hmm. booth, like put all that up. Um, there was no waiting inside the salon. I actually mm -hmm. physically put chairs six feet apart outside of the oh. salon, so no one could even wait inside. And so you were following all their rules and more and more. Yeah. Um, my nail tech was actually one of the first ones to create one of those plexiglass things. Oh, okay. Um, and with a hole in it where people can put their hands through. Um, she went to like Home Depot because it was open mm -hmm. um, and made one of those um, those plexiglass things. And, you know, people saw that and, and used that. Oh, we should do that too and kind of mm -hmm. copied her. Yeah. So. Yeah, that's... Man, and it's not like you were trying to make a statement at that point. You were just trying to get people to be able to feed their kids. I was not going to be the reason why they couldn't feed their yeah. kids. So they could not show up. I mean, they didn't have to come to work, right? Mm -hmm. But I was not going to say you can't come to work. So yeah. it's either your fault you're at home or it's the government's fault you're at home. But either way, it's not me. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. I just didn't want to be the reason. Um, so... Yeah. I think people should have personal responsibility for themselves. For sure. Um, it's definitely not the government's job to tell us when we can work and not work. Um, and especially during a time where the government was not helping anyone in any way financially. Yeah. So where did yeah. they think food was going to come from? Uh, the line to for like the food pantries was mm -hmm. like two miles long, people sitting in their cars. That's but then terrible. it's like it's well, you can't even buy gas to get in your car to sit in that line. So it's like... 
they people, they gave us no option. Walk. Yeah, they gave they gave no one the ability to be able to make not make that decision. That's right. And yeah. I guess did you have any community support for you doing this? So here's what's crazy. Not just community. I don't think it was community. Mm-hmm. Um we had a lot of people supporting us. The first day that we opened, the line was outside and the line was so long you couldn't see the last person. I mean, wow. it, people that flew is... in from different states um, throughout the first week that we were open. And it was funny because even bald men were coming <laughs> and saying, can you do something with this? But my hairstylist, only three of them showed up because they were scared mm-hmm. one way or the other. Maybe they were scared of getting COVID. Maybe they were scared of losing their license because mm-hmm. the government was threatening us. Yeah. Um, but in that okay, week and a even... half that we were open, um, they were the, the hairstylists that came were making about three grand a day each oh. because people were just throwing money at them saying <laughs> thank you for opening no noah's like i need to be a hairstyle right <laughs> yeah that's not that's not typical i will tell you but uh people were very appreciative of the stance that we took well and the it, bravery it took yeah. for them also to at that work. time people needed haircuts yeah well you could tell some people did home cuts and yeah i don't suggest <laughs> <laughs> it's not as easy as it looks folks yeah um yeah so yeah they did that but we had some hate too mm-hmm. the most hate that came from other hair salon owners or or really? cosmetologists um and honestly i think it's because the government was paying people to stay at home unemployment yeah. and they were making money and sitting at home and they didn't want to work which makes sense i mean like if you could make money and not do anything a lot of people would and it's still happening today yeah it's still happening and that's why there's and a lot of that's positions a major not problem open. in itself right um we know you are running for texas house mm-hmm. so um lucas what do you want to say um <laughs> so okay i'm gonna read this question off for those who don't know could you tell us what all the Texas House does. Well, they're basically, they, they're the legislature, so they create the laws for Texas. Okay. Mm-hmm. They, they make the laws, they vote on the laws for Texas. So, you know, there's three different branches of government. Yeah. The House is and the Senate of Texas, they create laws. Mm-hmm. Okay, so the first time you ran for Texas Senate, we know things didn't exactly turn out in your favor. So... What did you learn from that experience that could help you going forward this time around? Hmm. That experience was crazy because um, we announced we were running Mm -hmm. and then Governor Abbott said in two weeks early voting was happening. Um, And then it was just a race to the finish line. That was also a jungle election, which Uh means so just to explain what happened. Mm -hmm. There was a guy that was in that state Senate seat and he got promoted to Congress. Mm -hmm. Okay, Mm. U.S. U.S. Congress. Right. Um, So his seat was vacated early, which creates a special election. So the special election happens um, and the government because of COVID or the governor because of COVID could create whatever or he thinks he could create whatever laws he wanted to do Uh with that. Mm -hmm. Um, So when a seat is vacated early, even though it was a Republican seat, Republicans and Democrats can both run for that seat. Okay, even okay. though it was a Republican that left. Hmm. Um, and so there were six of us total that ran and I won the initial race. I, okay. I won out of the six of us. Um, but because um, I didn't get at least 50% of the mm-hmm. vote plus one, they call it 50 plus one mm-hmm. is yeah. what you need to win in All Texas. Right. Um, then we had to have a runoff. So me and the other guy, Drew Springer, and then we had a runoff. Uh, Governor Abbott and my opponent spent about eight million dollars to beat me. Ooh, that is that's a lot of. That's a lot of just cash. To beat eight million dollars. Just, 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 just to not let you win. Correct. Do you think without that eight million dollars, you you would have? Oh, absolutely, mm-hmm. absolutely. Man, um, that's crazy. That what does that would... eight million dollars do? Um, so, a lot of it is tv time oh Um, yeah so like your commercials running on tv is very expensive Uh paying to make the video to begin with so you guys are really good at videos like if you pursued that and like it's a great it's a lucrative career it's actually great um mailers that go out they call them mailers they look like big postcards and it'll say who you are and then like compare you to the person um, bi- those big, huge signs that you see all over um, the place. Yeah, that, uh, they're everywhere. Right everywhere. Now. Especially right now. Yeah. They're Election super season. expensive. Okay. Um, super expensive. Um, and, you know, just staff, people that help that are helping you. Um, I don't even know how many people were helping me. A lot of it was volunteer, mm-hmm. but um, it's it's expensive campaigning. Yeah. That, and here's what's bad about that. That's why it's hard for regular people 
to be in office. Oh, uh, yeah. because because they they're, so they're, they're poor. Because they're poor. Because they're poor. Like I'm just a business. You know, I, I own a salon. I'm just yeah. a business owner. So um, I don't have millions of dollars, and so I rely on donations from the people. Mm-hmm. Um, and then if you're already in office. And the lobbyists there, do you know what a lobbyist is? I do not. Uh, Okay. Well, let's talk about lobbyists then because this is educational. (laughs) So there's these people, it's their actual job to basically bribe the, the state Senate and the state house members to vote on certain bills a certain way that favors them. Oh. Is that illegal? No. How? It's, it's not. not. Really? Mm-mm. And it's mm. their job to basic. And here's how they, they take them out to dinner. They actually write them checks. And so there's things called TEC reports, mm-hmm. Texas Ethics Commission reports, where you can look and you we have to, as a someone in politics, we have to list every single penny that is given to us. Um, wow. So you can look and see okay. who's being bought or not. Okay. Right? Um, but it so, doesn't really matter. Um, it does matter it if you are a voter, yeah. you can look and see, well, okay. who has actually bought this person off? And it's, you, it's, it's, you know, you can, it's public. You but I wonder how it. many people actually look. They don't. And that, do you think that's the kind of the main problem? It's not the main on. problem. It's, it's a big problem. A the, the biggest problem is that voters are, um, not knowledgeable about okay. yeah. the candidates. And so you guys doing stuff like this is huge because it gives people information on mm-hmm. what's going on. Um, regular people that are trying to get into politics are very good at getting in front of people, talking to people, yeah. answering questions. Once candidates, sometimes when they get in office, they become um, where you can't get a hold of them. They don't answer their phone calls yeah. anymore because they're like, I don't have to. I'm in office yeah. now type thing. Yeah. Um, and that's why we need regular people in mm-hmm. office and possibly term limits saying, okay, you've been there long enough. You've gotten enough money bribes. Like, let's yeah. get you out and give someone okay. else a chance. That's, yeah, that makes sense. Because a lot of the older presidents, they served out their term and then just left. Right, right. Um, yeah, because there is term limits mm-hmm. as far as yeah. president. But look at if you know who Nancy Pelosi is oh, yeah. and some of those people that are just old, they need to go. <laughs> yeah. She's there ancient. For old. Too long. Yeah, she's old. Like, old. She's like a million years old. I don't even know uh, how she's A million and one. Yeah. A million and one. I don't even. And she's just a horrible, evil person. <laughs> the queen so, of England. That too. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> um, so I don't know what we were going through. The, the costs. Um, we got into lobbyists. Um, But yeah, people need to be knowledgeable about who Mm -hmm. and not just, oh, that person's my friend or I went to church with that person. And so I, so that's what we're, we're running into with my opponent because he's lived in this area a long time and he is a nice guy. He's a nice guy. I'll say that. But being a nice guy doesn't always make you the best person for the job. Yeah, Um, for sure. I I was a teacher for 13 years. Mm -hmm. Um, I taught Spanish. Um, there's, I know a lot of people that are, say you're really good at math. Uh-huh. Does that make you a good math teacher? Not, Not always. Yeah. yeah Just, you could be really good at math, but can you teach others? Yeah. And so I think it's the same way in politics. You can be a really nice guy, yeah. but does that make you the best person for that job? Yeah. They say that about coaching too. Like if you're yes. a good pitcher, a lot of times you're not a good baseball coach. That's right. And that's a big deal. Um, last yeah. question. Can you tell us your three main priorities? Oh, and actually, yeah, two, two question. more questions. Oh yeah, yeah, One that's really fine. Do you want to start there or there? You can. You oh, start. actually, because she had the teach. She was speaking about the teacher. Okay, makes sense. Let's go here. We have a question so, from an audience member. From a viewer oh, really? who is a teacher, and she asks, or she says, there is a house bill that specifically HB three that require teachers to complete eighty more hours of training that have put sh- extra stress and pressure on teachers. And let's see. Um, and it says, what are your thoughts? So the original HB3 that I saw didn't have to do with teachers. So I'm not sure if they're talking about this latest mm-hmm. session because HB3 that I went and spoke against in Austin has d- wasn't to do with teachers. But let's talk about teachers. Mm-hmm. Um, teachers are not taken care of enough. Mm-hmm. I agree. They are very undervalued. Yeah, for sure. Mm-hmm. Um, they do a lot. They are the front line uh, and and the reason why kids turn out to be decent people, mm-hmm. um, and I feel like they number one they don't make make enough money. Number two, when they retire, they make even less. I spoke yeah. to a teacher um, that had taught for forty years, and she had a master's. And her retirement, she's only making eighteen hundred dollars a month. That's really? not good. 
Man, yeah, eighteen hundred, and she had yeah, a that's master's not, degree. That's not going to get you dinner for a month. She can't even pay her own property taxes with that check, which is also a problem. That, okay, yeah, let's yeah. talk about property taxes. But you know, you know. So, but what I'm saying is, um, first of all, teachers should make no less than sixty thousand dollars a year, and that's minimal to me. I um, agree. Right now, my husband and I went to a quick, quick trip or whatever gas station in Allen the other day, and a assistant manager makes fifty nine thousand dollars a year. But you have teachers that have all of these degrees, have a teaching certification. Mm -hmm. They have to go through professional development, all of these things, and they don't get paid anything. And their health insurance sucks. Yeah. So teachers are very undervalued, undervalued. I think all of the red tape and the strings, everything that they have to go through is ridiculous. If they want to require those extra hours of teaching, they better pay them extra for them because that's more on top of what they already have to do. We need to take care of their retirement and we need to make sure that their health care is there because we want to say, oh, we want our kids um, you know, to be the greatest. We want America's kids to be the greatest. But if you don't incentivize teachers to want to teach, you're gonna have bad teachers. Yeah. That's why good teachers leave because they make, it's not worth it for them. Um, it once first year teachers need a $2,000 check to set up their classroom. Right now yeah. they use their own money that they don't have to set up their classroom and make sure that they have all the tools. I, as a teacher, used to give mo not money directly to kids, but to materials and things because yeah. Yeah. kids couldn't afford them. And I was, mm -hmm. what am I going to say? You sit over there because you don't have materials. Mm -hmm. No, teachers out of their own pockets. So right now, financially, I think that if we built up financially the salary for teachers, um, and not only made sure that we were invested in their retirement, that some, do you know what COLA is? Cost of living, mm -hmm. that goes up. And so we need to make sure that their retirement yeah. has a percentage of cost of living that goes up with the economy. With the inflation that's yes, going on right now. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Um, so I, I, I don't mind professional development that much because we want to make sure that our teachers learn the latest and greatest. But if you're going to require that and it's a requirement, you need to pay them extra. This is on top of your job already. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, you have to go to this because we want you to be amazing, but we're going to pay you for it. Yeah, Definitely. okay. Yeah, 80 hours is a lot of extra training, and I know they already do a lot of training. Mm -hmm. And I think that's over yeah. a certain time period, too, um, 80 hours. It's over a year. Is yeah. What, uh, yeah, that's, that's um, what it, I think it's over a year. And they have families, too. Exactly. You know, you have to, like, yeah, we love our kids, and we treat our students like our own kids, but we also have our own family, too. Um, and all the red tape and the craziness that happens as being a teacher makes it not worth it right now. Mm -hmm. um, we need to give them stipends and money on top of that saying, oh, this extra training, let's pay you. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and that makes sense because 80 hours is so much time that they could be spending with their families. And if they're not spending it with their families, they might as well make money. Right. While Absolutely. they're at it. I mean, well, yeah, if you're going to pull them, it's like any other job. To, yeah. to make you know six figures or more, you're probably going to work a lot. You know, but as long as you're getting the compensation to where you, when you're off, you can actually afford to take your family somewhere or do something yeah, with them, right. that'd be nice. Right, for sure. Now let's get back to that last question. What are your top three priorities? You brought up my number one and it's okay. property taxes. <laughs> property taxes are out of control. Um, I have, you know, we're door knocking. We're talking to a lot of people here in the four counties we represent, which is Grayson, Fannin, Franklin, Delta, right? A, yeah. um, tons of people that I've talked to said that they've lived on the same ranch. You know, th they've had it for generations, but they're going to have to retire in Oklahoma because even though the ranch is paid off, they can't afford to retire and pay the property taxes. And you never own your property in Texas. You never own it because you can pay off your mortgage completely, but your property taxes that continue if you don't pay those the government seizes your home so you actually just rent which, your property you're renting it from yeah. the government at that point almost it's I mean, no it is it is yeah because it you is don't own it you don't own any you never own it you never own it yeah, which and isn't, there are other good. states that don't have property taxes or they have property taxes but they run out after even prop 18 in california california's property tax system is better than texas that's embarrassing not good. That's sad. yeah that's, that's embarrassing <laughs> They but I'm California saying, out of all the places. Exactly. So they have a lot of things wrong with them, but their property tax system is better than Texas. Um, my opponent voted to raise um, five different bills. He voted to raise taxes. Uh, what? Why? To me, taxing is almost like theft. I agree. It's almost it's like, just like hey, I just need your money <laughs> for this golden toilet, <laughs> just, you know, and and to spend it on whatever I want, and yeah. you get no say in it. 
Um, and I don't mind like a consumption tax because we do need like the streets, the roads to be taken care of. Um, we need our state employees to be taken. I get all of that. Um, but there are ways that we can pay for those things yeah. um, without people losing their home. Um, say the sales tax rate, uh, consumption tax, they call it, like what you eat or what you buy. Yeah. You put a little a little higher tax on that, okay. right? What if you had that was higher instead of, so like, it's, oh shoot, I can't afford to buy steak today. I'm gonna have to eat a hamburger instead. But at least you won't get taxed out of your home. You yeah, don't see, lose you, your That's home. manageable. Yeah. It's manageable it's because, manageable. You, oh shoot, I'm in college again. I better eat peanut butter. You know, it is what it is. <laughs> yeah. But you still have a home to sleep in. Yeah, at least you have that 100-year-old ranch. Exactly. In your, your genera in generations. your grandfather's grandfather. Exactly. So, so yeah. property tax is the main thing. Mm -hmm. And first of all, we don't str straight away add a tax to make up for that. We go over after the government spending. Right now we spend like $86 billion or something crazy. I don't even know the number anymore on illegal immigration on illegal yeah. immigrants. Oh yeah, no, that's... Um, they're breaking the law to come into our state and we basically throw them a party over here. Um, so there are things that the cuts we need to cut spending on first. Yeah. Um, and then we can go after, okay, how much do we need to make up for this to make sure our roads and our, our county and our state employees are paid for? Yeah, for sure. I mean, there's, there's reasons for things that exist. Exactly. Yep. So that's number one. Mm -hmm. um, number two, we must secure the border. Yeah. We and must. that goes back to the immigration that you were just yeah. talking about. And that's not just that. It's not it's not Mexicans that are coming through our border right now. Um, what I'm concerned about is the cartel, um, the drug smuggling, Definitely. the sex trafficking, all of the dangerous things there. And yeah. why are they so worried about all of us wearing a mask and getting a vaccine when they don't even test those people? Yeah. They just come right in and they, they don't stop them. They don't do anything. Makes they no just come sense. right in. It makes zero sense. Um, so that's why we know that this whole pandemic thing is not about safety. It is about control. It is, yeah. what, what can we get the people to do? Um, and until we did something with the salon and said, not that, what, what else would they have been doing and how much longer they, would they we have been closed down? They didn't like it when you did that. Oh, they yeah. hated it. Yeah. They do not like when people stand up and go, uh, no, that's not right. You can't do that. Well, um, they want they want control. They want they want power over power. everyone. Everyone. So. It's all power. Mm -hmm. um, so I would say we need to shut the border down yeah. immediately. So property taxes, shutting down the border, and stopping government mandates, mm -hmm. um, to me, are the top three. I mean, there's several things. Yeah. Abolishing abortion, we could go after doctors. I think we should put doctors in jail that murder babies. I agree with that statement. Uh, for absolutely. Sure. One, yeah. Yeah. A thousand um, percent. Uh, the vaccine mandates. I mean, all the mandates need to go. Um, of course, we got permitless carry in Texas, but hmm. we could go as strong as getting constitutional carry, which is a little bit better. Um, so they well, made it's the name itself constitutional. Right. <laughs> they don't know what that means. Yeah. They don't know what that means. But I mean, what I want to bring to the Texas House is someone that says, okay, these are the things that I want to work on for y'all and actually go there and do it and stand up for yeah. it. Um, the, the rep that's in the position that I'm, you know, um, going for right now told me that he needs to, he should get along with Democrats and liberals and make nice with everybody. And that's how you get things done. And to me, um, I can be nice to people. I can get along and be respectful yeah. to people. But when it comes to these issues, I'm promising you these things. I'm not going to come back and tell you I ran out of time or whatever other excuse they give. Yeah. 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 That's yeah, thank you so much for joining us. I think you're that welcome. Everything. I loved it. It was fun. I hope y'all learned something too. Yeah, definitely. I, I, did. I, I think our viewers did, and I'm pretty sure we did. <laughs> Good. That's all that matters then. So, um, I think that's gonna do for this segment. Coming up next, I'm not sure what the order is, but it's we'll a do it right after. Thing. Oh, it is. Okay. Thing. No, 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 no. Wait, wait. No. no well, hold on. Whatever it is, we'll do it right after yeah. this. <laughs>